Yeah, sorry that took so long. My audio is being a bit weird. So how's it going? I'm back from my trip. We're doing two water-based games today. The first one we're doing the demo for... How do you say this? Lumion? And then after we're gonna play Fishy. This one takes place in the ocean. It looks real cute. The devs are pretty nice. I think this game comes out October 13th. Could be wrong though. I'm pretty sure there's something about that. Oh, it looks like Norse ruins. Oh, is that me? <laughs> but like a little fishy guy. I think this is a platformer now, I'm not sure. <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot to put the name. Uh. Okay, sweet. I updated my uh, thing to this. Oh. How do I get up there? Controller. How do I? I feel like I'm supposed to move up here. Perhaps not. Jump. This is cute. I guess that's it. <laughs> I thought I could uh, make my way back up. Oh no, this ain't gonna be good at all. If <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, grab. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. So, wall jump. Grab with the right trigger. Oh, I, I think I'm gonna <laughs> I think I'm gonna be bad at this one. Oh no! Hey, Aja, how's it going? Oh, that's how you do it. Oh. I'm going to be bad at this. <laughs> So I think the demo for this one's only about a half hour. Oh, well, knowing me, it takes me like way longer to, oh, cutscene. Oh, so I'm like deep in the water, huh? The path ends here. Maybe it's as they say, we fairies weren't meant to leave the darkness of the seabed. Aww. I couldn't have been the first to come up with this idea. Others must have gotten this far too. Only to give up in the face of this impossible distance. 
When what can I do about it? The distance is greater than my abilities will allow. Imagine that's the demo. <laughs> I hate this feeling. Who's there? Is someone there? Chin up. Chin up, child. What is this? Trust in the light in your heart. Ah. And no distance shall pose an obstacle. I can offer at this time only a meager, did a longer journey. It may not be much, but it should be enough to set you in motion. Well, wow. all right, this is probably going to make me zoom real fast or jump high. Oh, let's have a try then, shall we? Oh, fly, press this and hold X. Oh. That's nice. There are like many challenges ahead, but there is one thing you ought to always know. You are not alone, you never will be. Oh, that's cute. So I'm a little ocean fairy, like a deep sea fairy. Stay steadfast in your determination. Uh, I took too long to read that. In time, your path will cross. I join with... With what? That of a certain trustworthy companion. As for the identity of this fairy, that is not for me to reveal. Some questions have answers only you can discover. Trust yourself and trust those you meet who are worthy of holding your trust. Well, goodbye, floaty orb. It's pretty relaxing. I like the artwork a lot. Oh my god, I didn't even notice. I thought this was like... Oof. Uh oh, are those spikes? Yeah, how do we... Oh. Oh no. <gasps> this kind of reminds me of me dying a lot in Celeste. <laughs> Wait, I'm doing this wrong. Oh, I'm gonna be so bad at this game. No. 
know, I said the demo's 30 minutes. This shit about to take me an hour and a half. Oh. Oh. Oh, I see. I gotta get on the other wall and then go down. Damn. Oh god, I'm so bad. <laughs> what the fuck? Alright, jump. Fly. And then jump. Okay, what's going on? J jump. Fly. Jump. Oh. I wonder how long I can last that. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't think I'll get super far in this one. <laughs> Oh, how do I do that? Oh. <laughs> how the fuck am I supposed to do this? There's all spikes. I did the X, what happened? Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, I'm not quite sure I'm going to get quite far in this one to be honest. Is there like a uh Why is interact? Oh. How would uh, how would y'all get past this uh, right here? Ah. Oh. I'm just uh, pretty bad at these kinds of games. To be honest, I think it's super far in Celeste. Because I kept dying. <laughs> yeah, see, see how, like, I, I, I don't know what to do after I get that one. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused on the way I'm supposed to be doing this because I've tried quite the combinations and I'm not getting far. And I do give up easily, so I probably... <laughs> bro, I probably won't even get past this first level. Alright, so how the fuck... I don't know, I feel like I'm supposed to do it from here. Ah, sick.
I guess I gotta move the thing in the direction that I want it to go, perhaps. Ah, ha ha. I like the background art a lot though. I would probably watch somebody play this because I'm kind of bad at it. <gasps> oh, that was pretty close. I figured it out. I think you gotta, you gotta kind of like swoop the direction of it where you want it to go. Damn, that's hard to do because there's not like anything for me to grab onto, you know? Oh, fuck off! That was stupid. <laughs> Oh, come on. I think maybe, uh, to be honest, having this many spiky things in the first level is probably not the best of ideas. Or I might just be really bad at this. Maybe for most people this isn't a problem. Ah. I just, I do think it's quite a lot on the first actual level of the game. In my opinion. Come on, let's go. Yeah, it doesn't like- the flying mechanics are a little bit annoying because like I'll jump, fly, and then- oh, well now it worked, but the other time it didn't. Yeah. What, now, now, how did that happen, right? I was holding on. Kind of reminds me of Celeste. Yeah, it's similar to Celeste um, in that you can die and there's spikes on like the the jumpy things. Uh, it's like a similar play. Uh. Why this is so. This is so stressful. <sighs> no, yeah, that one at the end there is too much for the first level. That's like a bit of a force on the first level of the game. Unless this isn't the first level, this is a demo. So maybe it's they just throw you into a random... Uh, random level of the map, right? Because this is kind of hard for... Uh, uh, if this were a first level, this would be pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, see what happens with that. Why can't I do the fly thing again? Like what, I can do it once in the air and then I gotta touch the ground and then do it? That's pretty dumb. Oh, unless... Nope. Yeah, that is pretty dumb. Fuck! Yeah, see how I said the demo's 30 minutes? I'm gonna stop when I hit the 30 minute point. So whether I get done with this or not, is it? The 30 minutes in is gonna be my, uh... My contribution. Because <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna get past this level in all honesty with you I, d I don't think I am it's just a shame it's a really pretty game I'm just not good at it <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, if you're if you're good at these kind of games, I would definitely recommend it. I'm not good at these kinds of games. But they're so it's so pretty, you know? Yeah, yeah, what the fuck is the point? No. Hmm. Why am I so bad at this game? Ah. What are these bubbles for? Like, are they a bonus? Ah, oh, fuck me. That's going straight to hell. Oh my god. The demo's 30 minutes, bro. I spent fucking 30 minutes on the first part of the demo. Oh my god. Let's let's try again. Let's try again before I give up. <laughs> All right. Okay. It's like gonna have to watch someone else play this and see how they fucking got through the demo and actually completed the demo because uh, I have not made any progress on that one. Not one bit. Yeah, why can't I jump? Why can't I fly again? Oh no, why did I run it? I didn't... Jeez, I'm playing this on a controller. I can't imagine how fucking hard this would be on a keyboard. Maybe I gotta follow the rhythm of the fish over here to my left. Ugh, or I could die. <laughs> Alright, okay. <laughs> I think that's it for uh, for this game for this evening. Before I start to get angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, come on! Come on! <laughs> the fuck? What? <sighs> All right. <laughs> I 
I'm doing so bad at this game. I was okay at Celeste. Oh my god. <laughs> but I didn't make it super far on like the crazy one. Oh my god, we did it. That was fucked up. We got past the first section, lads. We did it. I did not think I would do that. Okay, why am I sinking? What am I doing wrong? I guess maybe, uh, maybe during the game you can extend how uh, long you can fly for, cause uh, it's kind of like a oh that spikes. It's a pretty short period of time. Oh my god, okay, we did it! Fuck! Alright. Who the hell beat this demo in 30 minutes? I just need to know. Oh my god. Okay. I, I was pressing X. I was indeed pressing X there. I w and again, I was pressing X there too. I'm wondering if like, yeah, maybe if you get past a certain point, it's just like, ah, that's where you're gonna fall and die. Fuck it, we're not gonna bother. Cause you're gonna reach the, the yep. Well, everybody, my patience has run out thin. So, <laughs> I'm gonna switch to a different game. Yeah, um, if you're good at these kinds of games, this has some really pretty scenery and artwork. And it's underwater. One of my favorite places. So I would recommend it if you're good at it. But if you suck doo-doo <laughs> at jumping games like this, such as I do, I, would, I mean, I would still recommend it. Hopefully there's like an easy baby mode. Uh, so I can just, like a no obstacles thing. So I can just climb <laughs> to stuff, uh, and play it like a child. Oh no. Why am I so bad at this? It's not like I, it's not that I don't like the game, it's I'm just not good at it, you know? There's so much pretty scenery, and I- oh fuck. <laughs> and I want to see the story too. No, no, I'm pressing the X. I swear to you, I'm pressing the X. How the fuck did that work? No, I was pressing the X, I swear. I swear on my dead chameleon. I was pressing the X. I'm pressing it! I'm pressing the X! You hear me press it? Here, watch. Here, let's try this again. Well, now I'm dead. Okay, I got it right up to the mic. Oh no. <laughs> okay, okay. N did you hear this? Ready, ready? Did you, you, you hear I pressed the X? Well, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna swap over to Fishy. I think that one is a point and click. So. <laughs> Give me a sec, I'll be right over.
Oof, I'm back. This is point and click. So, let me big screen this one up. Yeah, it looks like a point and click, so I'll put my controller back. Yeah, sorry, I was just so bad at that other game. I might try it again later in the stream after. Just so I can have a break from trying to do that, because, oh my god, I was so bad at that. It was really bad. Okay, give me a sec. All right. I'm in an aquarium. Okay. Wait, let me get my little thing that I rest my mouse on. There we go. Honestly, you didn't even want to come here. That's not true. Aquariums are super cool. The ones that are about Preserving marine life. The ocean has never been your thing. Oh, this is the opposite of me. <laughs> I love the ocean. I used to swim all the time in Greece in the ocean for hours because I thought the more that I would swim, like I could just change it to a mermaid. Yeah. Never happened. There are sharp things you can step on and colorful things that inject poison into you when you touch them. Well... Technically, that would be venom. Uh, and large things that are faster and stronger than you. And the worst part, they're all alive. Yeah, but I feel like you gotta go really in some kind of crazy waters, you know? And they're hungry. <laughs> Mom, I'm out of sparkling water. What kind of kid drinks sparkling water? You turn to look at the instigator. Of your distress, Monica. It's her 14th birthday. Last year for her birthday, Monica's parents rented the local theme park for a whole day. Damn. The entire class had gone. You'd gotten to ride the big kid rides for the first time. Everyone talked about it for the rest of the year. As the date approached again, the talk started to shift. What would Monica do for her birthday this year? You recall the sinking feeling in your stomach when you found out. Monica's 14th birthday, overnight marine adventure. Oh, ooh, that's pretty sick. You're invited to Monica's 14th birthday, overnight marine adventure. Spend an evening at the aquarium, exploring the exhibits before tucking into your sleeping bag for a night under the sea. This would be the coolest thing ever. I mean, if you're afraid of the ocean, it wouldn't. Mom, this sparkling water is cherry flavored. Gross. Typical Monica. <laughs> Your classmates swarm the lobby excitedly, stepping over sleeping bags and toothbrushes that no one has any intention of using. An aquarium employee is going student to student handing out ID badges. You stand alone. Where is Misha? Why isn't she here yet? She promised. You remember that day at lunch when she convinced you? You have to come. It'd be so fun. And if you don't go, you'll miss out. Everyone else is going. You'll be the only kid in our class who didn't go. Look, I know you don't like fish or oceans or like whatever. But you're probably just like it once you get there. <laughs> it's not like we're swimming with sharks or anything. There's no actual danger. I'll be with you the whole time, I promise. Well, you're here and Misha isn't, so that's cool. The door to the aquarium opens. Misha? What up, nerds? <laughs> Uh-oh. Toby drops his bag near the doors and runs over to Monica, holding his hands. Uh oh dun 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 Stop it, Toby. You're so annoying. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. 
Toby isn't in your grade, but he's Monica's older cousin, so he usually ends up at her parties anyway. The aquarium guide approaches you with a friendly smile. Hi there, I'm going to print you an ID card. Would you help me fill one out for you? Oh. Absolutely. Your name? Favorite fish. Favorite. Oh, that's tough. That's a tough one. I like hammerhead sharks, but cuttlefish are cool too. Yeah. What is my favorite ocean? What is my favorite sea? Okay. Give me oh one second. Oh, I did not know the devs were in chat. Hold on. So I have like two favorite sea creatures that I'm thinking of here that I could do. Wait a Uh, either I'm gonna go with cuttlefish, but I don't know how to spell that kind of thing. Is it cuddle? Yeah, I'm gonna go with hammerhead sharks. Oh, okay. Which is like very contradictory to my character. That ain't. Alright, I don't know if you can chat in the thing now. Let me know if I fix it for you. Okay. Yeah, hammerhead shark. That's what I'm gonna go with. I do. That's my favorite too! You liar. You probably said that to everyone who played this game. You know, hammerhead sharks are like way smaller than you think they are. They're like really tiny. And also, like, I'm pretty sure they couldn't even hurt you because their their mouth is so small. Like, what are you gonna do? Bite my elbow? Here you go. Don't lose it. Oh, is this me? Thanks. The aquarium guy looks around. I thought I said the aquarium guy looks good. Well, I think that's everyone. Let's go ahead and start. Wait, my friend isn't here yet. I'm sure they'll be here soon. Besides, the majesty of the aquarium awaits. Okay. Let's do... What's going on? Wait. Oh. He gives you two thumbs up and heads over to Monica's parents. Attention, everyone. Monica's standing on a bench, gesturing wildly. Your classmates quiet down and gather around her. Thanks for coming to my birthday. Tonight's going to be really fun. We have free run of the entire aquarium, so we can do whatever we want. Actually, some of our exhibits are under construction or closed temporarily for one reason or another, so please. Why do I keep doing this? Stay away from any off-limits areas. Oh, that sounds creepy. Just trying to keep you kids safe. Why is he sweating like that? <laughs> Alright. Okay, devs, I've switched off the email verification, so you should be able to chit chat a room. Very neat. Also, if uh, devs are lurking and can type, what is your favorite sea creature? I have like any variant of like an octopus, cuttlefish, and then a hammerhead shark. Those are basically the, the main two. 
or three, I guess. <laughs> you know. This guy looks nervous. You wonder what that's about. Yeah, I am wondering why he's sweating profusely. What's wrong, bro? Feeling a little anxious, you trace the rivets on your prosthetic arm. Also, we have unlimited lacrox. How do you say this? Lacrox? I don't know. I'm not French. So go wild. Thank you, Monica, and happy birthday. Now, everyone, we're going to enter the aquarium. We'll walk through the magnificent jellies exhibit and drop off your stuff in the deep ocean room. Ooh, where you'll be sleeping next to our 1.1 million gallon saltwater tank, our largest tank. That's kind of cool. Dredge shoots through your body. You'll be sleeping where? Now follow me, we're gonna have a really special night. So right now, what what's going on for me, my character is a very intense type of exposure therapy. <laughs> I mean, for someone who's afraid of oceans to be thrown into this, you know, that's intense. I mean, let's see if the fears are overcome by the end. It's dark inside the jellyfish exhibit. You catch a glimpse of these faces, the faces of your classmates, illuminated by the glow of the tanks. You walk along the black velvet floors, keeping to the back of the group. You don't know these people very well, but they all seem to be best friends. Plus, it's dark. You bump into a large shape in front of you. Hey, watch it, freak. Sorry, ignore him. Where's the beat his ass option? I want to know. <laughs> weirdo the aquarium guide stops in front of a wide tank with rounded edges jellyfish float gently behind him in a seemingly endless blue void now like i said we're going to drop your stuff up in the deep ocean room after that you're free to explore the aquarium until bedtime we have a few rules no running no tapping on glass and like i said no entering restricted areas now does anyone have any ideas about why we're not allowed to tap on the glass because it's rude and mean and disrupts the fish. You know, one time, I'll tell the story. One time I was at the New England Aquarium, right? I went with my little cousin a while ago. And then I'm chilling there and I'm like, okay, anyone who taps the glass is gonna get yelled at by me. And then, like, we're in this dark room exhibit, right? And then people are using flash, and I'm just out loud being like, what kind of idiot would use flash in a dark environment, you know? And then <laughs> then there's this one tank where there's these two fish, like, fighting. And this, this dad, and, like, with his kids, starts to tap on the glass. And then I walk over, and I'm like, hey, why are you tapping the glass for? And he's like, oh, they're fighting. I'm like, and what do you think tapping the glass is going to do? Hmm? Hmm? What's that going to do? You think it's going to help? Yeah, so sometimes I get pissed off at aquariums because people just... They put their flash on. They're pounding the glass like animals. Now, does it? Yeah. Because it'll break, killing all of us. Toby, you're a little shithead. Haha, <laughs> no, the glass on these small tanks is half an inch thick. Oh, my God. And the glass on our largest tanks, which you'll see later, is over 20 inches thick. You're perfectly safe. Would anyone like to take another stab at why we shouldn't tap the glass? I don't know. I know why. It gives the fish anxiety. Thanks, Dil on D Dillian. Oh my god, I can't pronounce words. Dillian is very smart. She's won first place in the school science fair every year since fifth grade. That's right, and fish get sick when they're stressed, and they can even die from stress. All animals can die from stress, even humans. It's a scientific fact. Well, yeah, technically you're correct. But no worries about that. Here, we just want to make sure that little fishies are as comfortable and happy as possible. The darkness is making you feel uneasy. You jump when someone grabs your shoulders. Hey, cat. You turn around. Finally. What a miss. Misha is whisper shouting, visibly excited and grinning ear to ear. You step away from the group to continue the conversation as the aquarium guide launches into a story about the aquarium's history. You scared me and you're super late. I was worried you wouldn't come. Of 
course I'm going. I would never miss out on this. What took you so long? Ah, uh, nothing. Just some stuff. Is Toby here? Uh, yeah, why? Uh, I think he's kind of cute. Anyway, look at all these cool jellies. They're like little aliens. Oh my god, I said this when I was at the court. I was like, bro. They look super out of this world. Like, there's this one... I should post a video, actually. I have one. There's these really teeny tiny jellyfish. And they're like clearish white. But they like glow rainbow. It's really crazy. Like when the light reflects off them. You watch the jellies for a while. Some of them kind of are kind of cute. The little ones that bob up and down. But some are bigger than you'd expect. Jellyfish tentacles are extremely dangerous. <laughs> they can sting prey so that they're paralyzed. They can't do anything while the jellyfish digest them. Er, that's true, Dylan, but none of that can happen here. Can you imagine what it would be like paralyzed, frozen, unable to move while a predator uses its long tentacles to slowly, painfully raise you into their... Alright, thanks for the facts, Dylan. The ocean sure is a fascinating subject. Look at him sweating. <laughs> Let's head to the deep ocean room and set down our things, okay? We followed the group through the rest of the jellyfish exhibit. Relieved to be free of Delane's terrifying facts until... You stop. The other kids file into a room called the deep ocean. Through the doorway, you can see the large tank. Glass lines an entire wall, floor to ceiling. There's something about that room. Something about the incredible vastness of the tank. How it does really look like a portal to the ocean and you get the impression something huge moving towards it a shark you turn letting the others pass you hey misha can you can, I, can you put my stuff near yours why you scared no i just feel weird about that room it feels weird just take my bag fine whatever wait here i think about the ocean about the water Deep water, so deep you can't see the bottom. You think about a giant mouth breaking through the darkness and it has eyes and teeth and it sees you. Hey! Misha grabs your hand. Come on, we're going to the kelp forest. Toby and a few other boys run by laughing. You hesitate. Misha rolls her eyes. Ah, don't worry. It's the kelp forest. It's not scary at all. She lowers her voice. This is our chance to hang out with the cool kids. I really want to look good in front of them. I know you're not like super into this, but it would mean a lot to me. Just try, please. Okay, but I don't like it. Thanks, Kat. You're a good friend. Now come on. When you reach the kelp forest, Toby has already jumped the railing and has his face pressed against the glass. Toby, don't do that. You're going to get in trouble. Hopefully he'll get caught and kicked out. Monica, you invited him. You didn't need to invite him here. Whatever. As if I want to hang out with you dorks anyway. I'm only here because my dad made me come. Super stoked you made it, cuz... Stop being babies. I'm not gonna tap the glass so hard. I murder all the fish or anything. I'm just gonna die because I tapped the glass. Yeah, I'm not stupid. Not falling for that. Wow, Toby's so smart. He doesn't fall for facts. There's no tricking that guy. She's funny. She's hilarious. You total dingus. Anyway, isn't the glass like two feet thick or whatever? Like I tap the glass once and it's gonna break? Sure, I'd need a super katana or something. Toby looks at you and freaks. Hey, I wonder what happens when you tap the glass with your freaky cyborg arm. Come on, try it. Toby, do your parents love you? I need to ask. Where does this uh, misplaced anger towards disabled people come from, Toby? Did we learn it from mommy or did we learn it from daddy? Anyway, Toby, cut it out. Stop being lame. I hate when kids bully other kids. That shit makes me so mad. Like, what? She's, look at this. Why are you being mean? I want to just see what happens. Come on, Kat. We're not supposed to tap on the glass with our normal fingers. But what about her weird robot arm? Maybe it's different. Maybe all the fish will come look at it and it'll be cool. 
Cat, come on. Misha tugs on your sleeve and whispers. Hey. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Absolutely not. Go fuck yourself, Toby. <laughs> oh, come on, please. If anything happens, which it won't, I'll tell him it was my idea. Please. Nope. Ugh, whatever. Lame. Toby dabs and then runs out of the room. <laughs> Toby, wait up. Come on, cat. Aww. You hear a commotion coming from the next room. You step out of the dark kelp forest exhibit. The reflection of the water is still touching your feet and into the brightly lit tide pool room. The touch tank in the corner sparkles in the sunlight. Wait. Fever classmates examine the dripping sand dollar while others walk away from the tank giggling after petting a hermit crab. A boy that you've never spoken to before approaches you. Sand dollars can feel pain, you know. I thought those were just shells. Are those, like, living? That's, uh, cool. He walks away. Huh. Hey! You wanna poke the sea slug? No. Oh, the hermit crab, then? Nope. But the touch tank is part of the aquarium experience. At least touch the coral. Huh. Coral safe. Non-moving coral. You can do that. You walk to the touch tank and look down. Colorful shells and lumps of coral lay on the sand. A dark purple sea slug climbs slowly over a rock. You take a deep breath. Reach into the tank. Slowly you lower your hand into the tank. Why are you doing this anyway? Because Misha told you to? Why do you do everything Misha tells you to do? Is she even here? You can't hear her. Actually, you can't really hear anything. You c your hand touches the water. It's cold. It is cold in these tanks. <laughs> Lower into the tank, into the sand. What were you reaching for again? Coral? Well, all you see is sand ebbing gently in the water. Specks flow upwards and stick to your hand. Lower. And you know, you could swear the tank didn't look this deep. The sand is ebbing less gently now. In fact, it's swirling. You can't see your hand. The water's suddenly murky. It's up to your elbow now. Damn. The sand churns like something underneath rising up. You move to pull your hand out of the tank, but something grabs you and pulls you back in? <laughs> Terror rises in your chest. You can barely breathe. You yell, but no one seems to hear you. You brace your body against the tank and pull upwards. It fights you. It's pulling you in deeper. Oh my god, what's happening? Deeper. Misha, help! You put your entire weight against the tank. Pull as hard as you can. You feel a release. Suddenly you're standing next to the tank surrounded by your lively classmates. Some of them are staring at you, giggling and pointing. You look at the tank. The water is clear and only a few inches deep. The sea slug continues its slow journey across a rock. I wonder if she maybe just had like a little anxiety attack, you know, because she doesn't like the water. I'm just telling the Lumion game devs that I it was so bad I only got past one level <laughs> of the game. That is so funny though. Alright. Jeez, stop yelling. What did you. Oh, a sand dollar. Cool. Well, you should probably put it back. You look at your hand. You're holding a sand dollar? Huh? I knew you'd t like the touch tank. What do you mean? Well, you clearly got into it. Your entire arm is wet. You check, your sleeve is dripping all the way up to your shoulder. Oh, thanks for the follow, Lumion. I don't know if you got to see me absolutely sucking at, the <laughs> at your game earlier, but uh, I was so bad at it. I did enjoy the nice ocean visuals. 
but I'm I'm rusty at those <laughs> kinds of jumping games. I died like maybe 30 times. It was bad. Well, you clearly got into it. Your entire arm is wet. You check, your sleeve is dripping. Oh, wait, that did happen. Your sleeve is dripping all the way up to your shoulder. See? You just have to try things. I knew you'd get into it. Try not to make a C next time, though. Anyway, Monica says there is a room with stingrays, so we should go there next. Oh, wait. Ooh, stingrays. Something grabbed me in the take. Dude, stop freaking out. Oh, everybody's gonna think we're weird. I mean, yo, if something grabbed me in the tank, I'd be freaking the fuck out, too. You know? Ugh. Alright, wait, I, st I, feel, I feel like I fixed all the burps. Okay. Any, when you could chat and clean before, y'all should be ready for it was probably just a hermit crab or something. You're fine. Let's just go to the next room, okay? Whoops. Misha grabs your hand. You look back at the touch tank. It looks normal. I mean, as normal as weird-looking coral can look. That is coral, right? You're starting to get a headache. The longer you look at the touch tank, the more it hurts. Come on. You look away and allow Misha to pull you into the next room. What the fuck? Monica and Dillian are already in the raised room when you enter. And besides, they're mostly harmless. They did kill Steve Irwin, but I, I don't know. Those stingers are freaking me out. Actually, those are manta rays. Plus, stingrays don't attack unless antagonized by a predator. Their barbed tails are only used for protection, although they are closely related to sharks and don't have bones, just like their shark relatives. Sharks don't have bones? Yeah, they do. The rays glide through the water. This tank is really big. The biggest you've seen so far. It's making you uncomfortable. You step back and survey the room. Plaques detailing the different types of rays and facts about their natural habitats line the wall. There's a doorway on the left side of the room with a restricted area, no entry sign in the front of it. The room past the doorway is dark, but you can see something on the floor. It looks like a broom handle? The object is partially obscured by the doorway. You walk closer. A generous trash can and equipment are knocked over. Cleaning items strewn haphazardly on the floor, and there's something behind it. You get closer. What is that? Hey, cat, how's it going? Uh, remember those restricted areas I mentioned before? This is one of those, so you're gonna want to head back to the exhibits. Why is it restricted? Well, this area is under construction, so uh, there are some animals in there, but the exhibit isn't quite finished yet. But don't worry, the fish in there are fine. They're happy as clams. I mean, there are clams, but they're happy. He's sweating again. Make your way back to the group. Only account for 306 deaths by drowning per year. Wow, Dillian. You sure know a lot of really bummer facts. I want to be a marine biologist someday, so I know a lot of facts. Sorry if knowledge bums you out. Till you guys are given the fish anxiety. Whatever. Hey guys, come quick. They're feeding the sharks in the deep ocean tank. Oh, I've got to take a selfie with that. That does sound pretty cool. Yeah, come on. Toby turns to follow Monica and Dillian. Then he s looks back. Misha, you coming? Sure, uh, yeah. Misha, don't leave me alone. Misha doesn't hear you, or maybe she pretends to not hear you. She runs after the others. Damn, the room is silent. Why would you rather be alone, though? You are alone, right? You look at the rays, and then at the handle of the broom, still peeking out of the restricted area. And the guide wasn't here. Where did he go? You feel your heart beating faster. A sign on the wall points towards the hallway. Labeled open seas. That sounds fine. How did that sound fine? How does open seas sound fine? Open seas is fine, but the sharks getting fed? 
Like, they're not going to eat you. They're getting fed. You walk towards it quickly. You immediately notice a change when you enter the ocean sea's room. The room is circular, and unlike the other rooms, there are no tanks on the walls. You look up. Shiny fish swim in the endless circles around the top of the room in a giant circular tank. You take a moment, breathing hard. You're feeling lightheaded. You sigh and sit down on the floor. So this sucks. <laughs> you didn't even want to come here. Why did you come here? Because Misha told you to come? Why? She doesn't seem to care now. She left. Maybe you're just her backup friend. Maybe she likes having you around in case there's no one better to hang out with. Maybe she likes that you don't have very many other friends. Maybe she likes that you need her. And Monica? Monica only invited you because you're in her class and she has to invite everyone. You've only talked to Monica like four times. Does she even know your name? You, you could be home doing something you enjoy, but instead you're here doing this because maybe you really wanted to believe Misha. Maybe you also wanted to feel wanted. Damn, this is getting deep. <laughs> you see what I did there? Ocean, deep. That's a good one. That's a, that's a knee slapper. <laughs> I always explain my jokes like Bojack Horseman. I'm, I'm noticing this now as I say it out loud. <laughs> uh, you tilt your head back and stare up at the fish again. You just try to focus on one fish and fall it all the way around the room. You keep losing it in the swarm of other identical fish, which shimmer sliver in the light. Your neck's beginning to hurt looking up. And your head hurts as well. And there's quite a lot of water above you. How thick was the glass again? The headache is about is getting stronger, but you can't stop looking at the fish. You begin to feel like a little motion sick. You're sitting, but it hasn't helped you catch your breath. Are you that out of shape? You wonder what happens if you throw up in an aquarium. <laughs> Maybe you go to jail. Oh, kids are funny. <laughs> fish jail? <laughs> you take a deep breath and stare at a single point of glass on the tank. Your focus, your focus is, you focus in on the area, shutting out everyone else. And then the glass cracks? Excuse me? Oh, what the fuck? The fish swarm? Why do they have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Hundreds, thousands of fish weaving in and out of the pack, in and out of the holes inside each other, thousands of glassy eyes staring right at you. Yeesh. There are so many of them, they create their own object, a heavy object, one that can crush you. Thousands of tiny writhing bodies in pain because you upset them and now they're dying and they're going to take you with them. What the fuck? I don't know what anxiety she has about oceans, but this is bad. <laughs> the swarm reaches out. One giant tendril. An arm bigger than your entire body and plants it on the seafloor. Then from its writhing body it extends another tendril and another. All bending at odd angles and even though it's millions of fish you feel... A reverberation in your bones as the knees break to bend backwards? It tries to move. It can't. It's dying. It screams in pain, each limb breaking under the weight of the swarm, each time a new one growing back. Oh, these are fish like swimming through each other. This is fucked up. And all they all have eyes and they're all staring at you. The swarm screeches and bends and reforms into an enormous ball. And then a hole opens in the muddle. Small f f at first, but now bigger. It's deep and black, but you can't see the bottom. Just swarming, screaming, dying fish all the way into the void. It moves to swallow you, and it does swallow you. And for a moment you can't scream, you can't move, you can't breathe. And then you can, and you do. You scream a lot, very loudly. You sit up from the floor. When did you even lie down? And stand up shaky and you run. Run! Well, this is took a turn. You run, you don't look back. Uh, I worry you going. At some point, you hit a restricted area sign and stumble. You keep running. It's actually really dark now. Where are you? Half finished posters, line, 
walls. Empty tanks sit on the floor. Tables knocked over. Up ahead, you see light peeking through a doorway. You enter. <laughs> you. I don't know what voice. You're finally here. Yikes. Um, hello, sir. Are you enjoying your trip to the aquarium? <laughs> Is it playing out the way you expected? I don't know what kind of voice to give them. What did you expect anyway? I feel like they'd sound like him from the Powerpuff Girls. Did you expect to have a nice time with your friends? I can't do a him voice. Making memories is learning about the natural world growing as human beings. Maybe you anticipated some of it. Toby's crudeness, Marco's arrogance, Misha's neglect. But maybe you are hopeful that in the end, despite everything, it would be okay. That's not where your eye. You don't even have... The eye should be on your... This part of you. You broken, desperate idiot. The vast ocean and its infinite complexities doesn't even acknowledge your existence. Hundred million years of sea of void and you a lone hammerhead shark. Oh, I see. That's why they asked my favorite. Um, it'd be funny if they said cuttlefish, though. <laughs> Come closer. <laughs> no. This is the part where it gets better, right? This is the part where your friends run in to save you. They say they've been looking for you this whole time. They say... They're sorry for leaving you alone. You feel comforted, you feel safe, you feel anticip accepted. Oh, look at the teeth. Why are they like human teeth? That's what happens next, right? They'll be here any second. I think I hear them. Friend? My mistake. Must have been a stray Roomba. Your classmates are enjoying their night. They are enjoying each other's company. They are making memories. They are learning about the natural world. They are growing as human beings. And they do not miss you. They haven't even noticed you're gone. You came here to prove yourself. And little hammerhead shark, what did you prove? You proved that you were right about your classmates. That voice in your head, the one that you could never quite silence, it's me, no imagine. That one that says they're better off without you? Did you really want to believe they were your friends? Or did a tiny, bitter, angry part of you, the part that has been hurt, want to find justification for your anger, for your fear, for your pain? Hi, Mr. Octopus. I'm 14 years old. This is kind of a lot you're dumping on me, don't you think? When you needed help, none came, and here you are now alone. So congratulations, though, Hammerhead Shark. You were right. So what now, cat? I am not broken. What's that, little hammerhead shark? I'm not broken. Sure, lie to yourself. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you see the truth. Give up. Stop fighting. What do you... Why? What do you mean? Yee. -yee. Stare at your own reflection. Look at yourself in the eyes and say that again. I dare you. I'm not broken. <laughs> yeah, fine. You need more proof then. Go ahead, find some. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> See you never. You're in a glass tunnel. Large dark fish swarm above you, around you. An enormous shadow blocks the light from above, then disappears. Was that a shark? You really don't like sharks. Even though your favorite shark, your favorite sea creature is a hammerhead shark. The light filtering through the water, through the kelp, through the moving fish is odd. There are plaques spaced evenly along the railing with fun facts and small blurbs about the creatures kept here. Days numb and directionless, you read them. Tuna can swim at speeds up to 70 uh, kilometers per mile. There are about 30k different kinds of fish, all of which have uh, their own colors and sizes. Many fish travel to schools to protect themselves from predators. Numerous sea dwellers use camouflage to blend in with their environment and confuse their hunters. That's relatable. 
You're back at the kelp forest. You remember this place. The room was colder than you remembered. It must have been hours since you were last here. Up ahead, is that? Guys, it's me. I'm back. Toby, Monica, Dylan, and Misha stand next to the kelp forest tank. So close, in fact, they're completely backlit by the night light from the tank. I have no idea what a relief it is to find you guys. They're going to be all sea creatures. Guys? <laughs> oh my god. I think I would pass out. <laughs> I guess we're running. The deep sea room, your worst fear, your only option. You pull the large doors closed behind you and then lock them. You don't get a sense that anything is following you, but you want to be alone right now. Oh, uh, wait. You sir. You survey the room. Sleeping bags and bag techs litter the floor. There's also a small table stack, several feet high with LaCroix cans. Classic Monica. Looking closer, you spot two familiar backpacks, yours and Misha's, but your sleeping bag isn't rolled up like the others. You see that Misha has laid out both your and her own sleeping bags next to each other, right up against the glass. She'd even found the blanket in your backpack, your favorite blanket from home, and folded it neatly over your sleeping bag. That was nice of her. Days and tired, you sit down on your sleeping bag and stare up at the enormous tank. Huge sharks swim higher than you could see. Smaller ones lurk near the bottom of the tank. It's almost like you're the one in a tank looking out of a window into the ocean. It's beginning to scare you again. You feel your pulse rising. You feel the headache coming on, but you force yourself to look. Out of the peripherals, you see a giant shadow bigger than the others approach you from the right. You stare ahead. You will not look away. Now, since I've played Animal Crossing, I can tell you right now, this is a mahi-mahi fish. And those are very hard to catch. They're a pure fish, and you can catch them at certain hours of the day. In certain seasons, which I've forgotten. But yeah, that's a mahi mahi. That's my animal fact of the day. And then he's. you blink. Aww. Oh! In front of you swims a giant lemon shark with a prosthetic fin. Oh! Its skin shimmers under the filtered rays of light. Just as it's about to swim out of sight, it turns. It does a few passes in front of you, lingering. You get the impression that it sees you. Hey there, friend. Aw, it flips its tail a little. It's not as scary as you thought it would be. I mean, sure, it's huge, but it's just swimming. It's kind of peaceful, actually. You lean back for a while and watch. Aw. What? The shark swims around. Uh... Weaving in and out of the rocks, passing the other sharks, reaching the edge of the tank, but never quite straying far from where you sit. There's a plaque at the bottom of the tank titled Ocean Guardian. It has a picture of the shark with the prosthetic fin. Meet Bruce, a lemon shark from the Atlantic Ocean. You may notice that Bruce is a little different from our other sharks. Bruce was heavily injured after a run-in with an illegal shark finning vessel. Due to the loss of his tail fin, or quadal fin, Bruce has been fitted with a prosthetic which allows him to swim as gracefully as other sharks. Despite his trauma and injury, Bruce has a calm temperament. He can be shy sometimes, but sharks are naturally social creatures and Bruce is no exception. He's especially friendly with sharks who are new to our aquarium and is instrumental in acclimating new sharks to the aquarium environment. Because of this, our handlers have nicknamed Bruce the Ocean Guardian. Unfortunately, due to his injuries, Bruce is unable to survive in the wild. We are happy to provide a home for Bruce, our unique friend. That's so sweet. Would die for Bruce. You watch the sharks, the lights of the tank dance over you. And you know, you're beginning to get it. Why everybody likes aquariums so much. 
Sitting here watching these sharks is actually quite serene. You think you could sit here for hours. After a while, you hear the doors open. Cat. Misha runs over and hugs you. She hugged you so hard you almost fall over. I'm so glad we found you. I was so scared. Oh, she's crying. Is she crying? Guys, we found Cat. She's in here. Monica looks at you and smiles, sort of tiredly. Her hair's a little frizzy and she's been running around. We've been looking all over for you, Cat. Are you okay? I'm okay. That's good. We were pretty freaked out. Oh my gosh, Cat. Finally, bro. It's you. Oh man, my heart is pounding. I was worried you fell in a tank or something. Toby, isn't there something you wanted to say to Cat? Um, something you've been talking about for the past hour. Remember, it was something like, I swear, if we ever see her again, I'll tell her. What was that? What was the rest, Toby? Um, yeah, Kat, I'm really sorry for bothering you earlier. I thought I was just being funny, but then when you went missing, I realized that maybe it wasn't very funny. I would have felt really bad if you got hurt or something. Anyway, um, sorry. And I think your arm's really cool. It reminded me of Iron Man. Aw, pew pew. Uh, yeah, that's it. Misha is still crying quietly onto your shoulder. You've never seen her cry before. She's whispering something. I'm sorry. Hug her back. I'm glad you guys found me. I was scared too. Yeah, this place is kind. This place kind of freak, freaky at night. I wouldn't want to get lost here either. But they've got some weird stuff hidden somewhere. Misha pulls away from you, wiping her face with her hand. So my eyes are red because I'm tired, not because I was crying, by the way. I wasn't. Yeah, Misha, sure. Uh, but Kat, you're okay. You sure you're okay? There's a first aid place, or like, I don't know. All your friends stare at you. They look concerned. You look back at them, and for the first time tonight, you actually are okay. I'm okay. Prove it. Prove you're okay by doing the wave. Yeah, you're fine, you dork. Hey, you're my best friend. You're my best friend, too. <laughs> and you're all my best friends, too. <laughs> Ugh, Toby. The search party is over. All your classmates filter back into the deep ocean room. Some of them hold flashlights or wear safety equipment. They're all excited to see you. They have been looking really hard for you. Monica walks up to you, hands you a LaCroix. My parents can take you home if you want. We didn't do the cake or presents because we were looking for you, so maybe we can cut you a slice to go. And you can have all the crew you want and be in the entire pile. I know we're not like best friends or anything, but like, can I hug you? <laughs> Aww, this is so sweet. Monica hugs you tight just for a second and let's go. Cool, well anyway, you want me to tell my parents to take you home? You look around at your friends. They're smiling, laughing, talking as they set up their sleeping bags. You look at the tank. Bruce does another pass. You feel comforted. You feel safe. You feel accepted. I want to stay. Monica looks surprised. Oh, okay, great then. Let's do cake, I guess. That's so cute. You spend the rest of the night hanging out with your friends. You eat cake, open presents, play games, and eventually you fall asleep under the watchful eyes of the ocean guardian. Oh, this was so sweet gonna cry. Bruce? <gasps> oh! That's so cute. This was such a cute little game. So fish is on steam and it's free. So you, so you should play it. Mm. Oh, this was so cute. She found a shark that's like her. That's so cute. If my mom saw this, she would be sobbing right now. <laughs> Bonus content in the gallery. This was such a cute game. I like the message at the end. I'm glad that they weren't going to be mean to her. Especially Toby. Toby was a dickhead at first, and I didn't like him. Oh, you can see. Wow. That was so cute. I 
I choose parrot? Kayla, I love your illustrations. If you are here, I want you to know that. This was such a cute little... I like the story at the end. <laughs> I love a little happy ending. Ah, thanks for tuning in. I'm debating on trying Lumion again, but I know I was super bad at it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be making a schedule for the next few games that I'm gonna be playing. So yeah, I'll be doing a lot of IG uh, 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 indie game collective showcases coming up. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure I'll do one tomorrow as well. But yeah, I'll make a schedule of it and you know probably release it later tonight. But yeah. Thanks for stopping in on my little aquatic themed stream. Have a good night.